She was exceptionally beautiful. He was an exceptionally good card player. Together they were quite a team. If you encountered them, they'd make an impression, one you wouldn't soon forget. She was Kate Morgan and he was Albert Allen. They were actually husband and wife, but they usually introduced themselves as brother and sister. That was part of their plan. They were making their way by rail from Iowa to Southern California. They'd stop in a town and they'd scope out the place. They'd pick out a man, usually of a certain age, dressed well, clearly rich, perhaps vulnerable. And then Kate would turn on the charm. She'd begin to flirt outrageously until finally the man would suggest a, perhaps a more serious relationship. Kate would laugh lightheartedly and say that such a thing might be possible if he were able to beat her brother in a game of cards. Of course, the would-be suitor would always agree and the cards would be set up Kate wouldn't stop the flirting. She'd keep it up, flattering him, encouraging him to, to raise the stakes, to bet more and more and more. But the truth is, is that Albert was a very good card player. And so he'd always win. And they'd gather that money. And the next morning, they'd be on the train out of town to a new town looking for a new mark. It was a very successful plan and they were doing work quite well. But somewhere just before they got to Southern California, apparently the relationship soured. No one's exactly sure why. Maybe it was that Kate learned that she was expecting and that would ruin everything. Albert wasn't the kind of a man to settle down with a family. And in any case, it sort of ruined their whole presentation as a as a man with an exceptionally beautiful sister who was available. But whatever it was, when Kate Morgan got on the train in Orange, California, headed south, Albert wasn't with her. She would never see him again. When she got to San Diego, she checked herself in at the Hotel Del Coronado. Now this was in 1892, Thanksgiving Day, November 24th. But even so long ago, the Hotel Dell was a very popular place. It had an Olympic-sized saltwater pool. It had hunting. It had deep-sea fishing. It had a Japanese garden. It even had an ostrich farm. And anybody who was anybody stayed there. Still, these were Victorian times, and so Kate couldn't come into the hotel through the main entrance. But there was another door off to the side that was reserved exclusively for unaccompanied women. It was that door she entered, made her way to the front desk, where she checked herself in, signing the register as Mrs. Lottie A. Bernard from Detroit, Michigan. She told the desk clerk that she was expecting her brother, a Dr. Anderson, to come to see her sometime in the next day or two and to watch for him. He handed her a key, a key to room 302, and she made her way to her room. Kate stayed at the Hotel Del Coronado for five days. She didn't in interact with any of the guests, just the housekeeper and the desk clerk. She checked with him every day to see if her brother had arrived. On the 28th, when she checked with the desk clerk, and he told her that no one had come asking for her. She exclaimed in despair, oh, nobody even calls for me anymore. And she ran back to her room. That evening, she took a long bath and got a head massage. The next day on November 29th, somebody reported later that they'd seen her in town buying a handgun, an American Bulldog 44. That evening, Guests saw her go down the corridor from room 302 and stand on the veranda looking out at the sea. Early the next morning, the hotel electrician coming to work just after dawn, he found Kate Morgan. She was lying halfway down the wooden staircase that led from the hotel veranda down to the beach. She was cold 
and stiff and dead, with a bullet wound in her head and the gun just inches from her outstretched hand. They had the body taken away immediately. It simply wouldn't do for the hotel guests to see a dead body on the premises. So Kate Morgan's body was taken to the mortuary. They went back to room 302 to see if they could figure out a next of kin, someone to inform of her death. They didn't find much. There was her handbag with $20 in it. And in the fireplace, the charred remains of some letters and papers, the only one that had anything legible on it, said, Lottie A. Bernard, and I do not know any such man, and Lillian Russell. Well, they didn't know who she was, really. And so for a time, the mortuary put her embalmed body in their window, hoping that someone local would be able to identify her. There were a couple of different identifications made, but those turned out to be false. Finally, though, a connection was located somewhere back in the Midwest. He sent a very brief telegram saying, bury the body and send me the bill. And so that's what they did. They buried Kate Morgan in Mount Hope Cemetery in San Diego, and that's where she remains. Well, for the most part, but that isn't exactly the end of our story. The Hotel del Coronado is still there and still a very popular place. Everybody who's anybody has stayed there, movie stars, presidents. It's even said that that's where the King of England met the woman he'd later give up his throne for. The hotel is always booked. And of course, the most popular room that is very often requested is room 302. Well, they've renumbered the rooms, but it is the room that Kate Morgan stayed in. If you stay there, watch for her. For Kate Morgan's ghost is said to float through the room late at night. Oh, don't bother to close the windows. Not that they'd keep her out now. You'll feel a slight breeze, see a fluttering of the curtains of the window. And there she is, Kate Morgan, floating through the room, still extraordinarily beautiful. And still, if you encounter her, she'll make an impression, one you won't soon forget.